When does a police officer become a peace officer? Well, let's ask Lisa Broderick, who's the founder of uh, Police to Peace, an organization that actually predates all of the, the commotion and chaos that we've been experiencing with groups and police and all of that. Uh, Lisa, nice to have you with us. Carlos, thank you so much for having me. What, what prompted you to create uh, Police to Peace? Well, years ago, I was working in a business, and I have a career in high technology where I help small businesses overcome great challenges, but I am from Silicon Valley, from the technology industry. And I realized, this is in the summer of 2016, actually, that the, America was facing a great crisis, and there was a crisis of policing even back then, mm -hmm. where we had terrible shootings and tragedies and cities erupting in violence. And using thinking that came from high technology and from Silicon Valley, a disruptive technology applied to a huge social problem using radical thinking can often solve it. And in that case, the idea and the radical notion was peace, applying it to our peace officers, to our police officers and to our forces around the country. I think a lot of people are surprised when they hear that, that, that uh, our state law, our constitution refers to police officers as peace officers. That's actually their title. That's what they're officially known as. Where did the peace part of it get lost, do you think? Well, you know, when we go back to fundamentals way back, and you'd have to go way back in the individual states, states govern their own policing. It's not a federal matter. Mm -hmm. And so in many states, in the code, in the original laws, that's what they were referred to. Of course, the word police came up, and policing is an adjective that people use. But returning to our roots as peace officers is something that I thought could really fix an issue which had been growing for a long time. And what's important about that is the ethos of peace and instilling that ethos into the officers. And we see the ethos as four things, and that is to prevent conflict. If there is a conflict, help diffuse it, to diffuse situations that are erupting, and most importantly, to aid the defenseless. I think we've lost that, but we can return to it. Well, yeah, the, saying that we've lost it, I mean, we, we actually have in Los Angeles, so I mean, this is, the, this is the, the birthplace of SWAT. This is the birthplace of almost militarization of police. And it, now it's been good and bad, depending on your point of view. But I think what's interesting is that you're actually working with police departments all around the country to help understand this, this, this peace officer training. And in some places, for example, San Diego, uh, they've been doing community policing for a long time very successfully so so you're actually saying i can help right that's right we work with departments and they seek us out actually to do the type of training the tools and the in a sense the genetic re-engineering back to peace officers a lot of the departments have uh, through, through many reasons as you just pointed out militarization as a result of 9-11, possibly, the introduction of technology in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, which allowed officers to stay in their cars, losing touch with their communities, all turned into what we experience now, getting back to the ethos of peace officer, preventing conflict, and aiding the defenseless is a genetically inspired ethos. And we believe that we can bring it through the wording and the training to every department in the country. Now, do you find that when you talk with police officers that for the most part, they're on board with this. It's just a few bad apples, as we, we hear in the media all the time. It is a few bad apples. We have 800,000 officers in this country, and I can't say that I know many of them. I know many of them. I can't say that I know most of them. Mm -hmm. And I actually haven't met any of them who would be bad apples. With that said, within every group, in every population, there are people who, who may not be uh, able to do that job, shouldn't be in that job. And I think that's what we're finding. Either it's a training issue or a recruitment issue, or as Sylvia Moyer, who's a wonderful chief here in Tempe, Arizona, put it, the corrosive drip of the profession. Hmm. It eats away at the ethos and the ethical codes of individuals, anyone in that job, year in and year out. And eventually, it would be better if they were just not in that job. I think that's what we're finding. Yeah, it's interesting, and I, and I think now there's a laser focus on this issue, and you started it back in, two, two, did you say 2016? 20, and, summer 2016. So now, now, it's, now it's very focused, the, the eye is on, on the police officers, but there's also a point where the public has to respect the, the badge, respect the institution of the peace officer, as you call it, and, and so it, it's a two-way street, right? And how do we learn to do that? It is a two-way street, and so policing and the safety of a community is a collaborative effort. As we've seen with riots and protesters and police responses, when the police walk with the citizens, the citizens embrace them. Mm -hmm. 
The police needed to walk with the citizens and the citizens needed to embrace them. So we've taken an issue inherently prone to hostility and violence and turned it into that collaborative effort. When you do that, you don't get the eruptive violence. And if you do get it, then it resolves itself very quickly. This can be done in every department in every city around the country, if the departments want to and if the communities want to. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a move now to defund the police. Uh, how do you view that? Well, I call it reshaping the police. A wonderful Los Angeles area police chief, Jim Bjorman, calls it uh, uh, narrowing the role of the police. Because with the many things that the police are called to do, they're not trained for a lot of them. They're not trained for mental health intervention mm -hmm. when you're dealing with the drug overdose, when you're dealing with homelessness, when you're dealing with all sorts of other things that would really be better responded to by workers with spe specific training. The issue is, is that for most police forces, they are the first responders and they're the first ones to get there. And also because of the conditioning of American society, we call them first. So to narrow the role of the police, to introduce things like in Oregon, they have a wonderful program called CAHOOTS. CAHOOTS is a ride along of mental health professionals with the police. It's funded by the state and it has been going on for years very successfully. Introducing things like that into communities can really help the police do their jobs and the community health professionals do their jobs so everybody gets what they need. I think the, under, uh, uh, the underwriting thing for, for me, what you're talking about is that you have actually watch all this in, in your life and you decided to do something. And I think if more Americans actually lean forward and lean into the process, as you mentioned in, in your earlier answer about getting involved in this collaborative effort, that things would be a lot better. And I, I commend you for uh, uh, creating Police to Peace and, and Lisa Broderick, we appreciate so much you being with us and, and, uh, and hope that this message gets out. Carlos, thanks so much for having me.